Things are about to get exciting for the CPU market again. It seems like we've finally gotten a release date and price for the upcoming Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, and AMD will be retaliating competitively with more Ryzen 5000 CPUs on the way. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It looks like the release date for the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is around the corner and I for one have been very much looking forward to it. The 5800X 3D was announced by AMD at CES 2022. It's basically a Ryzen 7 5800X but utilizes their 3D vCache technology where the CCD has a 64 megabyte SRAM stacked on top of one of the CCDs, tripling the total amount of L3 cache available to the CPU. Now, I have covered the specs and my initial thoughts on the CPU in a video I released earlier this year, so I'm not going to bother going through all that info again, but if you're interested in that discussion, link for it will be in the video description. What I couldn't touch upon in that video was pricing, and that was because at that time, AMD never announced the price of the 5800X 3D. They still officially haven't, but it's fairly safe to assume that these leaks are accurate. This was reported by video cards earlier this week on March 8th, who are stating their source has said that a 3D vCache CPU will hit store shelves on April 20th and have an MSRP of 449 which is what the original MSRP of the 5800X was when it released back in November 2020. This seems very believable to me, as it seems like AMD is trying to peddle their leadership status in the market, even though it comes off as quite tone deaf in my opinion. They've used the same strategy as they did with the Ryzen 3000 XT CPUs, though those CPUs were just mere re-releases with slight bumps to the frequency. The 5800X 3D on the other hand is totally different because it actually utilizes some cool new tech that we haven't seen before. However, at 449 USD, it's a price tag that's still too high to make it incentivizing or competitive in the market regardless of whether you're interested in upgrading for your existing AM4 PC or you're looking to build a new PC from scratch. Performance is also another topic I wanted to bring up again because at their CES 2022 conference, they showed some select few gaming benchmarks with double digit improvements over the 5900X and the 5800X 3D was also trading blows with the 12900K which currently is the quote unquote fastest gaming CPU on the market. The slide makes the 5800X 3D look more attractive, especially now that we know the price. If you're just a gamer after the best gaming CPU and you're looking at what your options are, at, as of right now, a $600 plus CPU is your only option. Whereas at 449 the 5800X 3D looks like a bargain, especially because you don't need a very high-end mobile for it. Of course, I still suggest waiting for third-party independent reviews to actually verify this. The actual overall advantage could be much lower than this. Cooling is something I'll touch upon a bit later on this video, but circling back to price and positioning. The 12700K, however, retails for less than $400, and guess what? It already delivers like 98% of the performance that the 12900K offers. If someone is aiming to get the same gaming performance as a 12900K for significantly cheaper, they can just get the 12700K, which if you weren't aware or forgot, it has 8 performance cores with hyper threading and has 4 E cores totaling up to 12 cores, which would give you significantly better multi core performance than a 5800X 3D. So, if you're to compare the two CPUs from a value standpoint, the 12700K is a much better option. The other thing I wanted to mention was that the vanilla 5000 CPUs still deliver impeccable gaming performance, and right now you can purchase a 5900X for the same price as what this 5800X 3D will launch for, or you can get the 5800X for about 100 bucks cheaper. Prices on those SKUs has been falling across multiple regions and retailers, so you can choose to save $100 and use that towards a GPU, which is very much needed these days. Or if you're after more cores, but you also want to, you know, stream and do content creation on the side, then the 5900X is a much better option. This is where the 5800X 3D falls apart. If AMD really wanted to make this product compelling, they should have launched it at $350, not $450. At this price, it just costs way too much over Intel's current offerings, and even their own. Even if you're someone looking to upgrade to this chip, I'd say save the money and put it towards the vanilla 5800X. I've seen those drop to like 300 USD, which gives much better performance per dollar. But hey, unless you know you want your AM4 platform to go out with a bang, then go for it. Another thing I wanted to talk about was related to the 5800X 3D is that 
it apparently won't have overclocking capabilities. Now, this is also something that hasn't been confirmed yet, but there are numerous sources that are stating this, and Tech Power Up have mentioned they've verified this with motherboard manufacturers, that AMD have told them to remove overclocking features for the 5800X 3D from their BIOS. And this does include PBO2 and Curve Optimizer, as, you know, those are considered overclocking features. The reason for this could be due to various reasons, such as heat, power, stability. The 5800X 3D has a lower boost clock than the vanilla 5800 X. This could imply that because of the chips being stacked, AMD were running into thermal issues with this chip. Another reason could be that overclocking might cause terrible stability issues with the cache. Who knows what the real reason is, but I've seen a lot of people get upset over this and I'm wondering why. Overclocking Ryzen barely does anything aside from making your CPU look great in some synthetic benchmarks. You can't even manually tune the multiplier to get an all-core OC at 5GHz, for example, and you're probably going to be ending up with something a lot lower than what your single core boost is, so you end up sacrificing gaming performance. And I've shown this in a video that using PBO2 with Curve Optimizer didn't actually really impact performance in a noticeable way. So if you can't overclock this chip, it's not a huge loss as these modern CPUs are already pushed to their limit out of the box, which I guess is a good thing depending on how you look at it. I'll leave it at that for now and reserve my final judgments until the chip is out and reviewed. Moving on, and the other portion of the leak I wanted to discuss was the upcoming Ryzen 5000 and 4000 CPUs that AMD will also be releasing next month, those being the Ryzen 7 5700X, the Ryzen 7 5700, Ryzen 7 4700, Ryzen 5 5600, Ryzen 5 5500, Ryzen 5 4600G, Ryzen 5 4500, Ryzen 3 5100, and the Ryzen 3 4100. So apart from the 5800X 3D, those are 9 other SKUs that AMD will, will be releasing. And it's interesting to see AMD release so many new SKUs to the market, and I'm not sure if all those will be available for retail DIY channels. Maybe some of the variants could be reserved for OEMs only, I'm not sure. For example, we've already had the 4600G be available for OEMs for quite some time. And you know, you can even go on AliExpress and pick one up from a reseller who's probably taken it out from one of these OEM systems. I also know there's a Ryzen 9 5900 that's out there that some OEMs offer with their systems. It could be that AMD just wants to release a bunch of these SKUs to saturate and offer more options to consumers in various segments as a final push for AM4. As with Zen 4, that'll be on a new AM5 platform, which I'm hoping will have the same sort of longevity that we saw with AM4. Looking back Back at it now, AM4 released back in 2017 and has gone through four major generations of CPUs. I don't think there's ever been a platform that has supported this many CPUs, so that's great. In this regard, AMD delivered to consumers, there's no doubt about it. But going back to the topic on hand, I am very excited to see AMD finally release some budget and mainstream oriented parts from the Ryzen 5000 series. This was something I covered in my has AMD abandoned the entry level and budget gamer CPU market video because it was pretty weird for them to launch the 5000 series without having any non-X parts like how they've traditionally done with previous generations and they didn't release anything in 2021 either. Then when Intel launched their 12th gen Alder Lake series and delivered parts like the 12100 and 12400, it impacted the market greatly because those CPUs don't break the bank, offer gaming performance that's comparable to some of the best CPUs on the market currently, and AMD didn't have an answer for it until now that is. The 5700X will be a great option for those looking at an 8 core CPU that delivers performance comparable to the 5800X but cheaper. Mind you, I have seen 5800Xs drop to 299, but that was really only at niche places like Micro Center, and not everyone has access to those. The Ryzen 5 5600 should be a great alternative to the 12400. With these specs I'm seeing here, it should be trailing right behind the 5600X, which, you know, is a great CPU as well. And with some tuning, you can probably get it to stock 5600X performance pretty easily. These are exactly the competitive CPUs that fans have been asking for, and it looks like we'll finally be getting them. What's also interesting to see is that AMD will also be releasing a Ryzen 5 5500, and this CPU, instead of having SMT disabled, as many suggested it would, is actually listed as 6 cores and 12 threads. So that's going to be making for a pretty interesting situation. We'll have to wait and see just how competitive it will be against something like a i3-12100 in gaming. But if you can get like 15 to 20% when compared to a 5800X, then it's a CPU that I think will attract a lot of buyers. Not to mention it has a core and thread count advantage, so that's already one huge selling point for it right there. However, video cards mentioned that the 5500 is actually based on Cezanne and not Vermeer. Cezanne yielded chips like the 5600G and 5700G. They didn't perform as well as Vermeer in gaming due to lower cache, and the 5500 could just be a 5600G with iGP disabled. The 4600G is also another CPU on 
I'm looking forward to see AMD release officially to the DIY market. As someone who has recently been looking at building a budget PC for someone who does light gaming, being able to build a system with this $150 CPU without having to worry about paying extra for a GPU right now would make this build a lot more doable for me, especially because I can't find a 3400G or 3200G in stock anywhere locally, and you know, it's all overpriced online. So there's some very interesting stuff that's going to be happening in the CPU market over the next month. I for one am very glad because as consumers this is the best situation you can ask for, being able to have access to multiple options from different brands at various price points. Now there will be something for everyone no matter what situation you're in, if you're upgrading or building from scratch. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.